Back in the year 1988, a man who was once an engineer at NASA wrote a book with the title, 88 Reasons Why Jesus Will Return in 1988. The book was originally titled simply, On Borrowed Time. The engineer believed that the end of the world would be in 1988. Lots of Christians took the book seriously. Regular programming on one Christian TV network was actually interrupted to provide special instructions on preparing for the rapture. The book, 88 Reasons Why, sold over 4 million copies. Now, of course, when the year ended, the author published a revision saying that it would be in 1989, and then again in 1993, and again in 1994. Naturally, he sold hardly any copies of those. Recently, I saw a news article that was suggesting a link between the coronavirus and the end of the world. Since Jesus said that no one would know the day and the hour, I prefer not to speculate. I'd rather be living in light of the reality that any day might be the last day for any of us. The great preacher F.B. Meyer once asked preacher D.L. Moody this question. He said, what is the secret of your success as a preacher? And Moody replied, For many years I have never given a single sermon without the awareness that the Lord may come before I have finished it. That's a pretty good way to approach life, not just for a pastor, but for anyone who has believed on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and has a relationship with Him. Romans 14.8, if we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. Knowing that we belong to Him makes all the difference. Of course I don't know when the world will end, but I do know that the one who loved me and gave Himself for me will get me to my end, and that means we can get through these coronavirus days through faith. Galatians 2.20 I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. <clears throat> and the life I live now in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. What a great statement of Christian living. Last Sunday, I appreciated what Pastor Worth had to say in the Granada online church message. Pastor Worth was talking about how the events of this past month have revealed to all of us how each of us really is quite powerless over the things that are going on in our lives. We really need Galatians 2. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me and the life I now live in the flesh. I live by faith. In the Son of God, Christ is power for the powerless. Amen. I sure have missed seeing all of you over the past few weeks. Like you, I can't wait for all of this to be done. In the meantime, let's keep praying for one another and encouraging one another in whatever ways the Lord puts before us. Personally, I want to thank so many of you for your cards and your calls and your continued financial giving to Redlands Church. We truly are a family in Christ Jesus. Oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable are his judgments and how inscrutable his ways. For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. is mine Oh what a foretaste of glory divine Heir of salvation Purchase of God Born of His Spirit Washed in His blood and This is my story song 
I'm praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, and this is my song. I'm praising my Savior all the day long. Submission, perfect delight, visions of rapture now burst in my sight. Angels descending, ring from above. I'm echoes of mercy. Whispers of love. This is my story, and this is my song. I'm praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, and this is my song. I'm praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I and my Savior am happy and blessed. I'm watching and waiting. Looking above, I'm filled with His goodness. I'm lost in Your love. This is my story. This is my song. I'm praising my Savior. My song, I'm praising my Savior all the day long. I'm praising my Savior all the day.